All right, welcome back to um, the next lecture. This is a lecture on a technique called latent discriminant analysis, LDA. There are actually an, other techniques also called LDA, unfortunately, but um, this is this is the one that's most commonly known. So the prerequisite to this class is you should have already watched the PCA lectures. And um, hmm, I need to change this. These, this is not what we'll cover today. That, those were the PCA stuff. Anyways, this is a Northeastern University course, and I am uh, Professor Wu. Okay, so let's, let's get a move on. Now, from PCA, which is the last lecture, um, hopefully you got an idea, better idea of projection, right? So when you do a projection, you basically have a point. And if you have a line like this, V, and you're projecting this point onto the line, Essentially, you are drawing a perpendicular line, right? And you're finding this point here by finding this value alpha. So we did this in last class in the PCA. Ideally, you know the normalized version of this vector, which would be about this long. And then, this, so this is v hat. And we want to know how much we want to extend v hat. So v hat, and you multiply by some value, which stretches v hat, so that it gives you this point here, right? And we also talked about, we also talked about, once you know you're on this vector, you don't really need v hat anymore. You just need to know how far that is, which is the alpha value. So we talked about how the alpha value is simply the vector, normalized vector, multiplied by xi. So if this is xi, right? Multiplying them together will give you the alpha. And then you multiply by V to tell you how much you stretch. So this is for one single point. What if you have 100 points, right? So if you have 100 points, you have to do this 100 times. Or you can simply put an X matrix here. So X1, X2, X3. And when you multiply by V, you automatically get every single one of them. Okay, So you're doing them in a batch in a batch. Now, so last time we left it here. So this assumes that you are on this axis, on this axis, and you just need to know the alpha value. But what if not only do you want to know the alpha value, you want this point in the original coordinate system, right? Not in the new coordinate. Remember, we're talking about getting the new coordinate system. But what if we want the original coordinate system? How do you get the all the points simultaneously. Well, remember, to get all the points, it'll be alpha 1 times v hat, alpha 2 times v hat, right? Alpha 3 times v hat. That, that's the, ideally how we can get the points in the original coordinate. And we can do this also in a batch, in a matrix format. So notice how if we, in v hat, instead of in a vector format, let's say we have v hat in a horizontal format, like transpose. So if we just take v hat, which is in this format, right, and do the outer product, so v hat will multiply by each one of them. So therefore, notice how this is alpha 1 times v hat, which would be the projection of, for the first point, alpha 2 times v hat, which would be the projection for the second point. This means that if you take alpha times v hat transpose, the resulting matrix is the projecting point in the original coordinate. Original coordinate. Okay, so this each each uh, row here will basically tell you the point. So for this one, it will tell you the point here. For this one, it will tell you the point. So you can get the original point. And this is useful if you want to look at the projection point in the original coordinate, right? So especially when you're plotting them out. So you you have these points, you found your v hat, and you want to you want to see these points along this drawing. Then this doing a batched will allow you to do it much, much faster. So so therefore, it's alpha, alpha times V hat transpose. That will give you every single point. And what was alpha? Well, alpha was 
alpha was x x um capital x times v hat so therefore if we substitute that in here so it's x v hat v hat transpose okay so this right here you just multiply this this is the equation that essentially gives you all the red points along the line of v okay this like take a quick look okay so the very first exercise i want you to pause the video these are the points right these are the points and let's say you want to project it onto this vector v notice this is v this is not normalized you want to project it onto this v which will create this green dots so your first assignment is to basically uh take this and do the batch projection and basically plot reproduce this plot so that you can like see you can see for yourself how this does uh, perform the projection okay so so um yeah let, let, let pause the video um and and try to do this exercise okay all right so i i mean of course i wrote the code for you but ideally you don't need the code um but if you're stuck you're welcome to look at what how i did this as well as the, here's the plotting like how i plotted this out okay all right so we did pca now that we've done this batch projection idea we we're ready to move on to lda pc and lda are two of the most fundamental algorithms that um in machine learning we just assume you have some idea of how they work um and we learned last time how pca works how do they find the the, the best v the best projection well the key with pca is that if the variation is large therefore it's preserving the original shape right so over here it's preserving the original shape over here it looks very different from the original shape this looks this very similar right so the larger the variation the more you preserve the shape and how do you preserve the shape after you do the projection you can simply look at the variance variance of the alpha values if the variance is large then you're preserving the shape if the variance is small then you are no longer preserving the shape right therefore the equation the equation for a, a, a pca is essentially you're trying to find the v hat you're trying to find the v hat that maximize that maximizes the variance after the projection notice this is the batch projection so it's just getting the alpha of every single value so it's it's is you're trying to find the v hat such that after the projection the variance is maximized that was how pca works so you can see that p the goal of pca is basically data integrity it's trying to keep this original shape as much as possible while you're reducing the dimension okay so this is great it could, because if you keep the original shape then you you're not losing much information however there's a downside there's a downside to pca the downside of pca is that it only care about the shape okay if you only care about the shape then you might lose other information for example we have two classes over here is orange over here is green if you have two classes we know that the PCA is going to uh, maintain the original shape. So after PCA, it's going to look like this. However, and it makes sense because this maintains the original shape the best way possible. However, you may not care about the original shape that much. Maybe you care more about separation. You want to distinguish the difference between orange data and the green data. And notice how after PCA, you basically mix them all together. Now, after you mix data together, it's very hard to separate them back out, right? If you mix, I don't know, orange juice with vodka, you're not going to get the vodka back out, right? So you reduce the dimension, but you lost the ability to distinguish the two classes, okay? So that, that's, that would be something bad for pca even though you maintain the original shape 
LDA, instead of finding the projection that maintained the original shape, is finding the projection that best separate, keeps different classes separated. All right. So if they were separated before, afterwards, you are in a low dimension and they are still separated. That's what LDA is meant for. So if you are trying to just maintain the data integrity, then you could, you do you do PCA. But if you're trying to like maintain the data integrity that allows you to still separate data apart, like notice how they are really well separated, right? This line basically separates them. So so if you're able to do that, then then that is that's when you want to use LDA. Okay. So this is the key idea for dimension reduction for LDA. That um, we're not trying to we're not trying to like maintain the original shape. Okay. Um, oh, one more thing. In PCA, we only have the data. You don't have the label. In LDA, you obviously would need to know which points that belongs to orange and which points belongs to green. So you have the label. So PCA is an unsupervised algorithm. There are no labels. And LDA is a supervised one because you need the labels to know how to uh, uh, reduce the, uh, uh, maintain the, the different classes. Okay. So how does it work? The linear discriminant analysis, or LDA. LDA is an algorithm that lowers the dimension of the data with the guidance of labels. The goal of LDA, the goal, is to find a projection, W or V, whatever, I call it W here, such that points from different classes will be pushed as a, a far apart as possible. So notice the center of this is trying to push them apart. You can tell things apart when they're physically apart. Therefore, you have the center of each the objective LDA is to push the center of each as far apart from each other as possible. So it's a different, like, remember, PCA is trying to maximize the variation, the variance. LDA is trying to push the center of the clusters as far apart from each other as possible. Okay. And I'm going to represent you pushing, pushing uh, them apart with a matrix called S1. Okay. Second, the same class, right? LDA has two objectives. First is to push the two class, uh, the two uh, classes apart. The second objective is that for each class, class one, class two, you want them to be as tightly packed together. Ideally, after you separate them, you have two points, and when you have two points, that's very easy to tell them apart. However, if they are not tightly packed it's possible that orange points can bleed into green points and the green points can bleed into orange points. So kind of mixing them together. And remember, we don't want to mix them. The more you mix them, the harder you can tell them apart. The more separated they are, the better. Therefore, what LDA is trying to do is that it's simultaneously trying to push the centers apart and it's trying to make each package as small as possible. Okay? So the Pushing the center apart will be the job of a matrix S1, and keeping each of the each of the pack as small as possible will be job of S2. Okay. So LDA tries to keep the same class together while separating the cl different classes. So you can see the impact of achieving these dual man mandate. Okay, and it makes distinguishing different classes uh, much easier. So. So what is the LDA objective? The LDA objective looks identical to the PCA objective. So if you know how to, you know how to solve the PCA objective, the LDA objective, at least the version I'm going to teach you, is identical. It looks exactly the same. Like right. Therefore, you know from PCA exactly how to solve this already. The solution is the maximum. Is the the the, the most dominant eigenvector, the vector with the largest eigenvalue. Okay, so if you know how to solve PCA, LDA is, is great, easy to solve. And this Q is simply S1 times S2. Now, remember, S1, right, is the distance. So you're trying to make the distance as large as possible. 
So here, you're trying to maximize this. And the inverse of this is you want the variation, you want the size of these to be as small as possible, right? So if you're maximizing, you want to maximize the inverse of the size. And that's what a Q matrix is, okay? So the vector here, the V, is the projection line. This is, this is where you would do the projection, right? This line here. Right, the general form of the objective is almost identical to PCA, right? So PCA, remember, the PCA, the Q matrix is defined differently. Q was like the, the, the definition of the covariance matrix, right? Remember how, how Q was defined. And then LDA is defined a different Q. But once you have Q, solving both of them are equivalent. Like it's, you can solve them exactly the same way. So our goal today is essentially to learn how this Q came about. Like what is the origin story, right? So pushing samples from different classes apart. So the, that's the first mandate. Like we wanna make a projection such that the samples are pushed as far apart as possible. So let's assume we only have two classes. So binary to one or the other. The first objective of LDA is to find a projection that pushes the points from two classes far apart. So how do we do that? We find, first we find the center. This is done by finding the center of the two classes and push the distance of the centers as far apart as possible. So you find the center here and you try to push the distance apart, okay? So let's call G1 as the group of all the points from zero, so maybe from orange, we'll call that G1. These are all the points. Um, did I call G1? No, I called G0. And then all the points from green, for example, we'll call that G1, all right? So G0 has N zero points, G1 has N one point. So this is saying that you don't have to have the exact same number of points in each group, like they could be different, all right? So the alpha value, when you project each sample would be V times XI, right? This is how you got the alpha value. So this is after the projection. So you got the alpha I. This implies that after the projection to find the center of the alpha, so these are the alpha, you just add up all the alpha and divide it by the number of points in there. So you put all the points from orange, project them onto V, so after you project onto V, that's your alpha values. So you basically average all the alpha value and that will give you the center, all right? So this, after the projection for orange, after projection for orange, is gonna land here, right? And to find the center, you just average all the points together. And that's it. And you do the same thing for the second group, for the green group, right? You also, also do all the projection and then average of the point. So now we have the center point for orange and the center point for green, right? Now, the distance between the center point is the difference between them. So center one minus center two. And then we find the norm, which is the distance. So we, we kind of find the, the, the norm of this. So the, the, therefore, what we're trying to solve here is we want to find a projection V such that the distance between the center are as far apart from each other as possible, okay? So let's plug this in. What was C1, C0? Well, C0 was the average, right? For all the points in group, group one. Oh, I typed it wrong. So notice I wrote group zero, group one. Instead of G, I think I type S instead, but you get the point, it's, it's the same thing. So group zero, group one. I should fix that. But anyways, you, you get the point. This, this is group zero. So you put all the points from group zero, and then after the projection, you just average it. That's the center point for group zero. And you do the same thing for group one. So you find the middle point for each. After you have the middle point, notice that V is the same. So we can pull V out, right? We can pull, notice how you can multiply V and V here. So we pull V out. Now, after V, this is a square, so to multiply by the square, then this is just this right here, multiply by itself transpose. That's what this right here, that's what this means, okay? 
Now, when you multiply them together, so you end up with this V and V here and multiplying by a matrix. So this matrix is just the, um, the, the, the difference of center square. Okay? And I'm going to call this matrix X, S1. So now we're trying to solve this. So if you were to solve this right here, you will basically find the V, the projection, that makes the center points as far apart from each other as possible. Okay, so I want you to take a quick break um, and, and see if you can, from lecture, and see if you could, um, given this data, let's say we have two data sets, use NumPy to essentially construct S1. See if you can do it, um, given these two. Once you construct the S1 matrix yourself, find a V. See if you can find a projection such that you essentially... Um, essentially um, the projection that pushes the two, two classes apart as much as possible. See if you can plot it out. If you can plot it out, that would be great. Okay. So this is the first mandate. Pause the video. See if you can do this. All right. Accomplishing the second objective. For LDA, um, remember there was a second objective. First objective is to push the centers as far apart from each other as possible. The second objective is make each cluster as small as possible. So you can measure the size of a cluster with variance, right? So remember, variance measures how, how uh, far apart samples are, right? So essentially, if we can make the variance of each cluster as small as possible, then the problem would essentially be solved, okay? Now, when the points from the two classes are not tightly packed, right? So if, if it's compact, it's easy to tell them apart. But you can imagine if it's too big, then we're going to have this gray area that becomes very confusing. And that's why we want each cluster to be as tightly compact as small as possible. Okay? So we accomplish this through this uh, concept of called scatter. Okay, so scatter, the concept of scatter is almost identical, basically identical to variance. If you know variance, you know scatter. Here's the equation for variance, right? We've done this many, many times. This is the equation for variance, 1 over n. The only difference between variance and scatter is that variance, scatter doesn't have 1 over n. It's just measuring the, 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 the distance. It's adding up all the possible distances from the center. So that, that's actually the only difference. There's no other difference. So you can imagine if you make this variance as small as possible, you make scatter as small as possible, vice versa. If you're making scatter as small as possible, then you're going to make variance as small as possible. And the good thing is, remember how the equation for variance in the matrix format, equation for variance was x transpose cx, right? 1 over n. So therefore, the equation for scatter is just no 1 over n. Right, so this is the equation right here for scatter. So what we do is we look at the scatter for all the points in group one, which I'm gonna call the scatter zero, not group one, group zero. Then I'm gonna call it scatter zero. And then I create all the scatter points, the scatter value for one. So this is this, how big group zero is, and this measures how big group one is, right? So now, this is a matrix, this is matrix. The total scatter will simply be the summation of the scatter. So this is how big group one, zero is, this is how big group one is, and the total is S2. So now we have the matrix for S2. And what we wanna do is we wanna find a vector that makes this scatter as small as possible. So this is a minimization, right? Previously, we wanna maximize the distance. Now we wanna minimize the scatter. So, so that each cluster is not huge, so that it overlaps with each other, okay? So now, this is another thing. Remember, in PCA, we want to maximize the variance, the variation. But in LDA, we want to minimize the variation of each cluster. So they're, they're doing different things. Yet somehow they end up to become the same equation, which is incredible to me. So 
How do you combine the two objectives? So right now, I just told you, S1 is the distance between the centers, and we want to push them as large as possible. S2 is measuring essentially uh, uh, the, the, the scatter, how, how spread out each clusters are. And we want to make them as small as possible. So how do we combine this dual mandate? Well, there are many ways to do this, to combine the dual mandate. One way is through this thing called the Rayleigh quotient. So you're trying to make this S1 as large as possible while making S2 as small as possible. So this is uh, the traditional way to do it. And I actually have a separate video teaching you how to solve this. So if you're interested in the Rayleigh quotient approach, you know, I have a video for that. However, for this class, we're going to teach the eigen decomposition approach. Essentially, remember, we're trying to make this as large as possible and the inverse of S2 as small as possible. So we, so we want this as small as possible. Therefore, if you just multiply the two matrix, right, let that be Q, then you just have to solve the eigen decomposition problem, right? So this is the one that I showed you earlier on, and this is the one we're going to solve today. Because if you know how to solve PCA, solving this is like really, really easy. Another way to do it is you want to maximize this and you want to also maximize the negative of S2. So you can either multiply them together through division, like multiplying by the inverse, or you can just say one is positive, one is negative. This is yet a different way. So in this case, you have a Q equals to this. So you can use the eigen decomposition method for you for both of these, and they, they will both work. Okay, so, so the idea is once you know that this is Q, then we end up with the exact equation as eigen decomposition, where you have V transpose times Q. And remember, this is not V hat. We need we need the Lagrange multiplier to essentially allow us to solve it. And this leads us to know that the solution is the eigenvector of Q, right? So as long as you calculate Q, the problem, the problem is basically solved. Okay, so, so that's how LDA works. Now, I wrote the code, the, like the actual implementation here. Notice I calculate S1, I, I also calculate S2. Once I have S1 and S2, then I have the inverse of S2, right? S2 inverse times S1, S1, right? And then that is equal to Q, Q. I take the eigen decomposition and the problem is basically solved, right? And, and then what I did is I, I did this projection thing. Remember, I told you, if you want to project a bunch of data, all you have to do is do X, uh, v hat, V hat transpose, like we did that in the beginning. So I basically projected these data for you so that you can later on visualize it. So over here, you can see that here's the data, right? Now, if if you had chosen PCA, you would have picked the pink line. So you would have project everything like this. But if you pick LDA, you would pick the green line. Therefore, you can see the separation between the red points and the blue points. Okay, so the code that generated this, I made sure I include the code. So you have the chance to play around with it. Okay, now, um, um, yeah, yeah, that's good. So um, I guess is this the end of the day? Oh no, this is it. So I want you to practice what we learned today. So these are the points. What I want you to do is. See if you can follow the idea today. Like, try not to look at my code. Try yourself first and see if you're able to uh, essentially regenerate this plot. See that you can, like, essentially uh, uh, write your own LDA, implying that you, you understand what happens, and then project it and create this line. Okay? Um, I guess that's it for today.